Hi everyone, I'm Nella Grabowski and I'm a gym rat, I guess. <laughs> so mainly everyone knows me from posting online and trying a bunch of crazy challenges, but um, nobody really knows the reasons behind why I do those challenges and try to have as much fun with moving as possible. So today I want to share a bit more about my why and the reasons that I go to the gym. All right, where do we want to start? Do we want to start some pull-ups? So um, just to start off back day, I'm going to hit some pull-ups. I like to, oh. Me and Sabrina are having a little uh, back and forth competition or agreement. Uh, game we're playing while she's in Europe. We're both trying to complete 50 pull-ups a day, but I'm not gonna lie, I've been slacking and I haven't done pull-ups the last two days. So today I'm gonna try to hit 150. Okay. I'm getting a little sweaty. Okay, that's it. Right. Okay, so mainly what got me into fitness was my boyfriend. It was my junior year of college and I was pretty stressed out in school. I, I wasn't eating a lot. Um, I don't know, food was like the one thing I could control in my busy schedule. So if I had assignments or deadlines to meet, I would just put off eating until until everything was done and there were some days when I just, I forgot and Mike and I were doing long distance at the time. So we just weren't seeing much of each other apart from FaceTime. We came home during the winter and I remember the way he looked at me. It was kind of like a, he didn't want to say that I was like really skinny, but I was a lot skinnier than how he remembered me. And looking back, he really just like did everything like really perfectly and kind of, I guess like tricked me into going to the gym. So. He would like strategically like make me eat more food or be like one more bite, one more bite until I was like really full and that would help like expand my stomach. And then he would make going to the gym really fun and introduce me to everything. I'm just so grateful that he was able to introduce the gym to me in such a positive way because it completely like reshaped everything and really gave me an outlet to relieve stress in college and just to escape from assignments and to deal with all of like my emotions in a more healthy way than I was doing um, and ultimately help get me to where I am today. So I just want to say thank you to Michael for helping me with that. But Michael aside, let me talk about some other things that I got on my back. I'm going to do one more set and we're going to pretend I did three. I don't know how much more I got, if we're being honest. I think that's all I got. There we go. So while Mike helped get my foot in the door of the gym, something that constantly prevented me from going in in the first place was I was scared to injure myself. Um, more specifically, my back. I had scoliosis growing up. Then I got my spine fused on December 19th. 2020, 2015, December 19th, 2015. It's about to be the 10 year anniversary. 2014, 10 year anniversary. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. I got my spine fused on December 19th, 2014. So it's gonna be 10 years in two months. And honestly, I lived most of those 10 years in fear of moving and in fear of injuring myself and injuring the titanium pole in my spine. That's not gonna break. That's more strong than bones. That's not gonna shatter, but I don't know. All the, like my parents and my doctors, they always said I should be careful and not really expect too much of myself. Not that there would be any crazy limitations, but just, you know, I'm not gonna be a professional gymnast or dance like I used to. To be completely honest, I haven't talked about this much because I've always felt like a little bit of, I don't know, like shame about it. Um, holy shit. <laughs> like nobody really made fun of me to my face like my best friend did. She wasn't really my best friend, but it was just a time when you were doing the scoliosis check every two years in school. So around that time when it came up, everyone 
was kind of making fun of scoliosis without really knowing what it was. And even I was doing it in fifth grade. I was like, ooh, who has scoliosis? And then I got scoliosis. And then I didn't really talk about it or tell anyone. I kind of just left school and got the surgery. Um, I was like in a lot of pain leading up to it. And no one really like reached out. Um, so it was like a really like lonely period as like an eighth grader. Long story short, left school. That best friend I was talking about, she spread a rumor that I was dead. Um, nobody really texted to check up and see if I was alive. But you know, that time period really made me learn that I could be independent and all I really need is myself. That time period and recovery, it was so hard, especially as a 14 year old and I don't wanna, like I never talked about it. I don't mean to get emotional. Like I'm so far past this, like I barely remember that time period and yet like I'm never gonna forget it but all in all the surgery went great I had an amazing surge in Dr. Blanco in a uh, hospital for special hospital for special surgery in New York um, he was amazing did a did a great job he only fused the top half of my spine so the bottom half was left mobile and that was kind of a really smart decision beforehand because I know most people they either get like the whole spine fused or like more sections, but he really tried to um, stick to the top section to preserve mobility. So I think that really helped with recovery and how I'm able to move now. So I had surgery and then I wasn't in school for a few months. I was supposed to start competitive dance that year, something that I was really excited about. And then I got news about the surgery. So we had to cut dance entirely. By the end of the year, I performed in the recital for one piece, but I definitely should have. I didn't look like a dancer. Um, it just wasn't graceful. <laughs> the fucking shit. Yeah. No, we couldn't. Like, I, like, genuinely, I never talked about it because, like, so look, I'm getting all of this out. It's therapeutic. <laughs> yeah, by the end of the year, I was trying to get active again. I was like, this isn't gonna stop me. I'm gonna go back to the way things were. We're just gonna pretend the surgery never happened and we're just gonna push through. And for years I had that same like push through mentality. Like if, if I have pain, like just to ignore it, to not like learn that there are other forms of like movement and other forms of activities. I kept being really narrow minded towards the, the past um, basically. But over time in high school, I did find other passions. I specifically got really into lacrosse and theater. Um, I wasn't actress or actor or anything. I stutter over half my words. Um, I was I was the stage manager and I helped like build the scene and design everything backstage. So that was really fun. And I liked exploring that part. It wasn't until college, until Mike brought me to the gym, that's when I started to accept it for what it was and started to be thankful for the way it moves and the strength it gives me, um, as opposed to just constantly feeling like like it's a burden or a hindrance or it's, it's a roadblock because it's not. I've been able to do everything and more. It was just like more of a mental thing that I had to get over in the start. I'll do a quick flex for you, ready? Ready? Do you want to have a push-up competition real quick? To be fast. <laughs> you burn yourself out more easily. Okay, you got a point there. Also, I'm going off my stomach again. My stomach is a trampoline. <laughs> so, I have it a little bit more easier to do that has actually- So, in the beginning, I tried, you know, the powerlifting arc. Uh, I used to love to bench, deadlift, and squat, but I kept noticing that I had a lot of um, back pain, specifically after deadlifts and squats. It was deteriorating my back in the process, and same thing with deadlifts, because um, this is the only mobile part in my back. Like, this part is kind of just like stiff, so my lower back has to compensate for everything. So for deadlifts, I would constantly like be arching on the way up, especially when I got towards heavier weight. And I'm gonna be honest, uh, after a while, I just stopped powerlifting because it wasn't for me. It didn't feel great. And I, was, I felt like I was doing it to prove a point or 
um, just to stick it to the haters online. I'm just taking things little by little and trying to better myself every day. Um, little by little is a saying my dad always said growing up and he still says it now all the time. It just, um, it always really resonated with me and whenever I got stressed I always thought to myself just take things little by little. So that's just how I'm taking things now. So right now most of y'all know me from posting online. I, not about scoliosis, I don't try to make my page a scoliosis awareness page, but I like people to be aware every once in a while that, you know, there's a pull in my back and that's the leading cause of why I'm posting and why I'm challenging myself. But being a gym influencer isn't all that I want to offer. I want to start to expand in other ways and I have some projects that are in the works. Um, not ready to talk about them quite yet, but there are plans for the future that I'm really excited about and you'll know more when you know more. I <laughs> kind of forgot to mention this earlier, but uh, let me just dive into what Spinal Fusion is and why I had to get it. So, um, like I mentioned, I had scoliosis growing up and, you know, I got a back brace, but I was not going to wear it to school. I was not going to let anyone see me in it or know that I had scoliosis. Again, I felt a lot of shame at the time. I'm not even sure, like, where that stemmed from, but I just did not want anyone to know. Um... So I was also supposed to wear the back brace at night, but after my parents did their nightly check-in, I would throw it onto the floor and say goodbye. Um, so my curves progressed really fast and it kind of got to the point of no return or what the surgeon called the point of no return, meaning that um, the curves would continue to progress past puberty and potentially um, crush like organs or kind of like shift thing like the the spine is connected to the ribs so like everything was kind of like curving and um at the time i had a lot of migraines and like back spasms um sometimes it would just like i'd feel something like go like kind of like i don't know like like an electric shock basically and i would just like kind of like fall down or like hunch over um and all of that stopped after the surgery so that, that's good, but um, in order to correct the scoliosis, what they did was they took two titanium poles and drilled it into the vertebrae with 17 screws. Uh, what that did was it immobilized the top half of my spine, um, leaving the bottom half free, and the bottom half kind of straightened out. Um, I think they're still like a 10 degree curve or something small, but it, I don't have that S curve anymore. Um, and I also gained an inch and a half after the surgery. But um, basically, spinal fusion is just the, the fusing of the spine. You take two poles uh, and you drill them into the vertebrae and leave everything rather stiff. Just a little bit of a breakdown. And for a while, I really, I really hated the score and I hated the look of it and just wanted it to fade. But I don't know, sometimes now I try to get a video of it and I'm like, oh, it's so faded that like I can't really see it until I flex and then see all the, you know, muscles that are a little messed up in there, but that's fine. Yeah, now I see the scar as like a sign of strength, whereas before I, I thought it was something that I should like cover up and hide all the time. So I'm definitely in a better mindset now about everything. So here's my favorite little bicep exercise. So you hold the dumbbell over here at 90 degrees and then curl twice on one side and then stop when you're going down, go back down and then curl up twice. It'll leave, um, it'll get you a nasty pump. Um, it's a quick burnout. I go like five, 10 pounds lighter than I normally do for curls and it's just great. So I know this was kind of a chaotic video. Uh, I've never talked about the surgery on camera and honestly, I haven't talked about it in a few years, so I'm sure there's a lot I missed, um, a lot of points I didn't cover, and a lot that's just jumbled around, but it's been really nice to be able to get all this off my chest and share it with all of you because it's such a huge part of my story and a huge reason as to why I do all the, the crazy things I do and challenge myself to a bunch of ridiculous stuff. So I hope you guys liked learning a bit more about me and my story and I hope it 
inspires you to continue to challenge yourself and to continue to try to do the impossible because anything is possible. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe for more content and see y'all next time.